Okay, yes, cool. You're there? Can you hear me? How is that? No, I can't be you moved. How is that? Yes, you're there. Yes. Hello, Megan. No, you're not there. Hello. Yes, you're there. You're there. You're moving. Okay. How are you doing? I'm so happy to be here. Yes, I'm happy that you're here too. Where where are you calling from? San Diego. San Diego. We're not so far. Great. So Hi. Megan, for how long have you been an actress? Uh so I, I did a bit of a hiatus to have a a, a, a brood of children. So okay. I would say 15 years I took off, but all in all, just in my um soul i've been an actress since i was five. Oh my god wonderful so, so how was it acting before now, now i know, know that, that you're, you're able to be completely unapologetically yourself which is amazing for an actor because, because that's, that's so unique, unique that, that no one can ever compete with, with you when you're unapologetically yourself. yourself yes but um was, was it always, always this way, way? and if not, not how was acting before being unapologetically yourself Acting before was acting, uh, acting to, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to act like, yeah. you know, I mean, very Shakespearean-esque um, cliche, mm. it, it, exposing myself in a way where I was indicating, yeah. although I had the feelings, mm -hmm. but there was too much on top of those feelings that yeah. there was no freedom. And there's I had no need them. to do that. No, I think having them probably got me the auditions, but, uh, and sometimes the callbacks and booked, but now there is a, an experience of you dump the water jug out and the water is just coming out. Yes. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah, it is. And why is it beautiful? Because all humans are beautiful. And if they can just be themselves, yeah, and not show and demonstrate who they are, because they're not themselves, it's just beautiful to watch. It's just extraordinary to watch. And so before you did that, when you were the big Shakespearean actress who was pushing and demonstrating, yeah. how was that feeling? How comfortable were you in your own skin and how fulfilling was that? You know, I would have moments of feeling euphoric. Mm -hmm. I would have moments of feeling like, oh my gosh, this is what I want to do. I'm made to do this. But now I like, I pick up a script, right? And I and I I look at it and I initially get brave and dangerous. Mm -hmm. Because brave and dangerous is my freedom. Yeah. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Let's do this. Can you hear me? Yeah, now I can. Great. So you you were sharing about how sometimes it was euphoric before when you were you yes. know big and acting and then yes. sometimes yes fuck instagram live okay okay so so basically there was an experience where after i did your work um 33 days of hell that took me much <laughs> more than that uh in the midst of having you know a huge family huge responsibilities and then just trying to stay fucking sane in the midst of discovering myself with your work mm -hmm. and like unapologetically being myself in the work every day and that tension that it was creating between mm -hmm. my old self yeah. and my real self good self and and then exploring that in my text and in my character work it was levitating so now i'm just fucking free now i'm like now i'm like oh 
you you want me to be a sexy radio operator. Okay, well, I actually don't feel that lights me up. I feel like a, a maniacal, fat, donut-eating, old-school radio operator. So I'm going to do the audition that way. Yeah, yeah. And, and, then, and then what happens? And then my email just goes, ding, 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 ding. I know. I choose to be dangerous. Yeah. And I'm already a little dangerous, like for Mm -hmm. everyone who knows me. But but now I get to own my danger. Well, now you're an artist. Now danger is what you have. And so danger is what you be. Because if you're not doing danger and danger is what you have, which is not the case for everyone, but for you, obviously, danger is what you have. So yeah. you're being just authentically yourself. And if you're not yeah. doing that, it means you're faking, you're repressing, you're not doing any art. You're just, I don't know what you're doing, but it's its not worth mentioning, right? So yeah. that's where people get sticky and confused. They're like, well, everyone's told me all my life I had to behave like people wanted me to behave. So if I have this crazy inside of me or this shyness or this anger or this whatever it is, I can't show that. I have to hide it. No, you don't because Mm -hmm. your ego will ping, ping, ping when you're actually yourself. There's no more acting needed, but no one trusts that because they've been warned away from it their entire, entire life and conditioning. I have, I have, um, I believe a experience that's unique in the way that because I have had to balance my sanity with having children, three of them crazy enough to do that. And then, and then now to experience life where uh, my children aren't little, I have this experience where I get to really, really choose because I know myself and they're not like baby, baby, baby anymore. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, nobody's eating mommy alive anymore. Get the fuck out of the way. I've got work to do. And guess what? It's not personal. It's not. (laughs) No. It's never going to be personal. I've got work. I've got things that are bigger and have been inside of me since I was this a little cell. Yeah. You know, and when I get to tap into that, Joe, I mean, it's bliss. It's bliss. I mean, I've said several times, honestly, when I'm doing my, my, uh, my warm up work, I, I, you know, we all have our way of warming up our instrument or being alive, or I've said several times, it's like climaxing. Yeah, it is. It's literally because I get, you know, my artistic statement, I get to be unapologetically me, like it literally talking about it. It's an, it's such an eroticism of experiencing my true sensuality. Yeah. My face can be whatever it wants to be. And I feel fucking sexy as hell. Oh, love and, it. You know, and I, and I can, I can literally like just be sweating profusely and so just present with myself and honoring myself yeah it's it's um I didn't know that well I didn't know a journey could take me there well you forgot that that's who you were because it's not a I forgot I forgot you were like that when you were a child before you were conditioned and and when people told you to never be yourself uh, yeah to always fit and be like others wanted you to be but, yeah. but but when you feel that climax, it's because you're finally home again. You're, you it just feels like bliss because it's what you came for. You came to have your life experience, not other people's life experience. You came to have yours, and so whenever you're touching that, it's orgasmic because that's what you came for. Yeah, and then I have a problem which is not orgasmic. It's that I want to talk to you forever, and I have super child obligation that is non-negotiable for which I have to go so I feel like a a divorce that was too soon to happen um and I hate it but 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 we can meet again there we go because we're not that far we're not that far 
Okay, great. So Megan, thank you so much. I apologize to you and everyone who was with the tech issues, but oh. you're, a, you're a delight to be with. I cannot wait to see you more and see your work and see you in films and all of that. Thank you, Joe, so much. I'm so grateful to the whole community. Yeah, whole community is really orgasmic. So thank you for this orgasmic moment. On yes, <laughs> take it with you and share it with everyone outside. Yeah. Yes, 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 I will. Okay. Thank you. Love you, Bye. Joe. Thank you. Love you too. Bye-bye.